How's it going, Pokemon fans? The crew from Jollymon's here with a special guest. We have Michael, who made top eight at the Toronto Regionals a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. So, Michael, if you want to say hi to anyone watching? Hey, hi, guys. Um... So, he made top eight in Toronto. Pretty decent sized regional, right? Yes. Not like super small. Like, what was it? I think it was Philadelphia was really small. I think it's around 343. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Top eight still that's a bad. very good placement to make. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know and don't see it on the screen, Michael decided to play uh, Seismitoad Giratina. And Michael, why did you choose to play that deck? Uh, it was a funny story because I never play tested it. For two weeks, I've been play testing Dark Giratina, the Dark Dragons, and that excites quite was, a bit. We were at the venue, I was talking to Jimmy Sang and Oscar Morales, and they were like, oh, uh, we're playing Totina, and I was like, why? Because there's a lot of Night March around, and uh, there's Mega Ray also. And I was like, you know what? I I never liked the Dark Dragons. So uh, last minute, I was building the Totina. I didn't have enough cards, and I borrowed some cards from some friends over there. It was like a last-minute decision, like no play testing, doesn't know what we're gonna put in there. We just like whatever we can have, whatever we have, and whatever whatever we can grab, and that's it. Okay, so what was your MVP in the deck, and why was it Giratina? I'll say the MVP would be the Headringers. That's a good answer. That's unexpected. Headringers, definitely Headringers. Shane trying to make a For joke all. and it failed. It was your joke. I can say it. I mean, the Headringer has helped me a lot with mirror matches. A lot. Uh, with Jimmy Pendervis, with uh, Dean Nizam, the Headringer was like a clutch all the time. And yeah, like, we're going to leave most of the expanded talk here to CJ, since he's the only one who's really played long enough to know a lot about expanded. I, I used to play, I've tried to play expanded a lot. I haven't been able to recently as much as I want to. You at least played when these cards are standard legal. True. We didn't. So. Anyway, next question. It's kind of a random off the wall question, but it's gonna we're gonna use it to kind of lighten the mood a little bit, because it seems to always be a big deal at regionals. Was Toronto ad adequately equipped for lunch? No. <laughs> no. Definitely a no. I know um, the one regional I mean, we went to. They it just we started really late. I mean. I think the first match was like around 10.30, I believe, 10.30 to 11, somewhere like that, somewhere in there, so I don't think lunch will be an option. The, uh, the one we went to, they only let Chick-fil-A sell lunch, and they ran out of food like four times. Oh. <laughs> I heard like they had to go like back to the shop multiple times just to have enough food for everyone. They actually limited how much food people could buy. They're like, two sandwiches max. Wow. Yeah. Well, the good thing about Toronto, there's like Tim Horton, there's Carvey, just outside the hotel, so it's easy access. It's just, I mean, no one wants to go out anymore. Luckily for us in Georgia, I scrubbed out really hard and just went and bought everyone lunch. So. <laughs> True MVP. <laughs> Alright, so now we'll get into the juicy stuff. Trevor's going to help us out here, and we're going to do a round-by-round -round recap of day one. Starting right. with round one, of course. Where's your board? Yeah, where's your board? I threw it over there. Oh. Killing me, Smalls. Anyway, Trevor, All go right. ahead. So round one verse was first Scott Hatchet. Hatchet? Mm-hmm. So Hatchet. how did that go? Um, he played Darkrai. Um, like just straight Turbo Dark? I, well, there's so many things on it. But I can't remember all of it. But um, it was it wasn't turbo though. Oh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, uh, we ended up tying. We ran out of uh, time of uh, time because um, he was not. I don't know if he um, he's familiar with this deck that much, or he is to it. I mean, he's been taking so much time playing it. I mean, I don't want to call judges for it because I mean he's doing something. It's just it's really slow. So we ended up tying, think. and I was like, I'm okay with it. It's game one, you know, like, game one, I'd rather take a tie than a loss, so. Right. Hmm. Then, so round one was a tie. Yeah, Not the best start, but 
it's not, not a necessarily loss. the worst start. So it's not a, I mean, it's an okay start and a loss. So yeah. So then. Right. So going into round two with a tie, you are reversing Chris. I don't know how to say that. We'll just say Chris. Uh, S. I think it's uh, Chris. Uh, Cicala. Chris, Chris S. S. <laughs> Chris Yakala. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Playing, um, he was playing uh, the CGI Plume. Oh Ouch. boy. Yeah, and, and both uh, both game one and game two, he locked me turn one. So. Ugh. Yeah, that was the story of a uh, Toad being massacred twice. Easy. It, it's a, it was an easy win for him. Right. Yeah. Seems like definitely a bad matchup. For sure. To be fair, getting plume turn one is always a bad matchup. No matter what. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the list right now, and there seems to be a lot of items. So. So then, that's a zero one one start. So you pretty much got a Superman it. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we were talking about it too before round three that um. We remember that uh, Raul, Raul Reddy, uh, made a comeback from one of the originals, starting with a zero, I believe a zero, two loss, or a zero one one also. So I was like, oh, oh, you know what? I have to pull that run. I have to do the same thing as he did. I have to pull the Raul Reddy run. <laughs> what? So we're like, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, like it's a hallelujah, whatever. We'll do everything just to win. Right? <laughs> I mean, it just shows, like, you shouldn't give up. So, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean I, I, my son was doing really good, and I don't want to be like, oh, okay, I'm done. I just have to watch my son. Right? Yeah. I mean, in zero one one start, and this is a top eight interview, so clearly it worked out. <laughs> like, yeah. Clearly something happened where we're some, here. Some good fortunes came. So I'm yeah, some good the, fortunes came. That started with round three, right, versus Paul Enright? Yeah, playing uh, Ibelto Maxi. Hmm. Uh, it, it was it was um, I can say it was a one-sided match, in favor of me. Um, he was really dead throwing game one and game two, mm -hmm. and I kept hitting all my my crushing hammers on time, and there's nothing he can do about it. And it's just like it was just an easy game for me at that point. And the off chance that he did draw good is that normally a good matchup. For you? Uh, Ivelto Maxi, probably I can say about 70 30 in favor of uh, Totina. Okay. Hmm. Seems pretty good. So we're back yeah. up to 1 1 1. So you must have been feeling good after round 3. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, I went to I, I went to Israel Sosa and I was like, that was my first win, man. And uh, he was like, well, what did you play with? Oh, uh, Ivelto Maxi. And it was it was okay because you're not the one playing it, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> the shout outs. <laughs> okay, so round four, so with one win, one loss, one tie. Round four was against Sam Johnston. Mm-hmm. Uh we played Excel Gore uh Wobba Fett. Ooh, Ooh, I like that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So how'd that go? Um, uh, well, all I have to do is just power it up a Giratina. And that's it. And then just and then attack. Was like, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, because yep. those decks should pretty much just play four double colors, and that's it for energy. Yeah, I, I, I pulled Keldeo as soon as I can. So that even if he set up, um, it's okay because I have, I have Keldeo to rush in and retreat. Yeah. And from that point, it was just game. Ooh, so then that was another easy game, too. Yeah, that was an easy game, too. Okay, so... Easier than the others. Yeah. <laughs> so going into round five, two wins, a tie and a loss. Round five was against Carlos Melendez. Yes, uh, he was playing... Uh, oh, uh, he was playing Mega Raid Vulcanian. Oh. The hype. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's way too excited about that. I love that deck. I was I was really surprised. I thought he was playing Vulcanian because he started with it. And I was like, I mean, I never saw an expanded version of... Mega Volcanian, so I was like, oh, he's playing Volcanian, and he went first. And it was just like, wait a minute, why is he playing Mega Turbo? He discarded <laughs> a Mega Turbo with the Ultra Ball and everything, and I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then I saw the Hoopa, and then I saw the Volcanian, I'm like, oh, okay. 
No, well, at least now I know I have to play with Toad only, and then I'll, like, discard all my Giratina. <laughs> you know, that definitely seems like an odd choice since an expanded you have Battle Compressor. Yeah, that was, that was really surprising. Maybe, maybe it was just someone who took a standard version and just added a couple cards to make it expanded and... I put in a computer search. Yeah, like, not really realizing... I don't, I don't know. I don't know these big name players mostly. I don't know. I mean, I don't even the know. guy made it to what was that round five with a. Uh, I don't know people by name. Decent enough so. record, so it must work a little bit. Plus, while Canyon Ray is the hype. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that. Not anymore. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> with, with guardians around, I don't think so. Fair enough. So you ended up winning round five, correct? Yeah, I ended up okay. winning round five. So that is three straight wins, because you have to pretty much Superman it. So we're going into round six against Arden Florindo. Yeah, he was playing a Volcanion deck. So it was also the same same strategy, just play with Toad, remove energy, which one is going to be attacking next. Uh, Toad Scrapper was a big help. I remove uh, the Float Stones, and I, I, I gave him... Um, I gave him headringers, and uh, that was it. <laughs> I bet hitting for weakness doesn't hurt either. Yep. Uh, quaking silent. punch for like sixty, eighty damage. Plus silent lab. Good stuff. Yeah. It seems like a pretty. I don't want to say. Oh, easy I can't. Matchup, I, for favorite. some reason, I cannot bring out silent lab for two games. I played that guy. I cannot bring out the silent lab. It's either a surprise or it's somewhere in the deck. So I actually just won the Volcanion matchup without Silent Lab. Yeah, it's just Toad. Oh, well Toad, and then I just keep hitting the hammers, and just keep hitting, uh, I don't know, I'm just probably, I keep hitting everything I need. Arceus just didn't want you to have the matchup too easily. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so that's four wins in a row. Yeah. Wish I could do that. So I bet you're feeling really good. You feel like you can win all the way through? Yeah, point? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing the Raul Render. I'm like, I'm doing it. <laughs> People are like looking at me like, dude, that was a good comeback. You know, like, I, I just hope it just keep, you know, it just continue and everything. But because mm -hmm. doesn't dead. doesn't two losses and a draw mean you don't make it? Yeah, uh, okay. six two one can bubble, but pretty much it doesn't guarantee anything. Six one two two guarantees you. You'd rather stay away from bubbles at all costs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it kind of hurts a lot. Like, especially when Bubbling you bubble into... Who is it? Uh, Russell likes to bubble at ninth a lot. Oh, Russell, yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one that keeps up with this stuff. They don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, I watch events. I just don't remember people a lot. I just watch... I just like to watch them play. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Russell does one of like the article websites, I think it is, and he likes to bubble at ninth more often than like anyone else so news to me <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're going into round seven versus riley herbert yeah that was a very controversial game uh oh uh oh uh because i played volcanian on the last ma on the last round i the guy forgot to return the headringers oh, oh. Ooh. so uh on on round seven on game one, I was losing already, and the judge came over and asked me, "How many, how many cards do you have in your deck?" And I was like, "It should be 60. And I'm like, "So you're not missing a head ringer?" And I'm like, "What? If I'm missing a head ringer, you have to tell me now. You are missing head ringers, and you're missing two. And I was like, "And then they counted my deck. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'm playing 58." And they they want to give me a game loss on round two instead of round one. But I'm already losing round one. I mean, game one. And I was like, I told them I cannot, I cannot accept that decision because right now I'm playing 58 cards. If I have to lose, I have to lose now. That's very true. Yeah. Because okay. I mean, it's the deck is incomplete, so I should have the game lost on game one. And they were like, No, you have to, you have to have it in game two. I was like, No. That doesn't make sense. Game two, I will have 60 cards already. Mm hmm. And then they talked about it for about like five, five, seven, seven minutes, and they were like, "Okay, you know what? You're right. So uh, you lose game one, shuffle your deck, and then start game two." 
So from game two, I was like so scared already. If I miss something, if I make a mistake, and that's for that, that's it for me. Is it supposed to be um, your responsibility to make sure you get the cards back when they're attached to your opponents? Yes. <laughs> Actually, okay. Yes. Well, that's the other thing too. It's like one of those where it's like, I definitely agree fighting the decision to have the game lost for game one instead of game two because I mean yes, it's your responsibility as the owner of the card and the player playing them to get them back, but mm-hmm. it was not an intentional way of cheating. Like, I'm wondering if any responsibility falls on the person that accidentally took the cards. I think morally, yes, but technically, no. Does that make sense? I, I get it. Because usually they say you have, to, you have to count your deck every round. So, just to be sure. I mean, that, that, that happening definitely makes me want to do that at any big event I go to. Yeah. Yeah, but then game two with Headringers, I put Headringers on all the Dark Rides, and he was just like... Same strategy as game three, and then just won it. And I was like, I was like, oh my god, that was one close one. So the Superman dream almost stopped right there, then. Yeah, Our yeah. I was tried like, to step in the way, it. and you just <laughs> quaking punched it right in the face. So that was. Uh, I'll say and that's why I'm saying uh, Headringers. It was the MVP. Headringers always saving my ass. Is that is that a card that's not usually in the Totina decks? Um, I played Totina uh, last year in a, in a CETA tournament. Uh, Headringers, uh, my list always have Headringers. I think that's the only card that Jimmy uh, Jimmy Sang didn't play with his Totina. Hmm. I, I know when I looked at the list, someone who just started playing with this like this rotational season, I was like, what does that even do? What is that? <laughs> you know, when you look at like the top list from all the other expanded regionals that have happened it's not something you really see so I thought that was kind of neat I thought it was a usual card in the deck but I, don't know. I, was, ex- I was expecting Totina I mean if there will be a lot of Nightmarch there would, then there will be a lot of Toads so I was like only way you can play with Toads Mirror is Head Ringers right pretty smart decision I mean I think it paid off I think it's pretty clear yeah if it's I- MVP <laughs> that's one. That's one of the techie cards I'm interested in. But we'll get to that. We'll right, get that so lined up. Round eight. You're going on Superman streak, still winning. So you're playing against Jordan Burlock. Yeah, he made the top thirty-two as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was playing Mega Ray with Seismito. Hmm. I mean, he I like used, that. He used Seismito to control Night March. So. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I, I have to, haven't heard of that yet. Well, I know the uh, the guy that won the last one. He was playing a water mega ray deck with size with toad in it. Uh, shows how much out of loop I am. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, he'll play Karen. He'll play Karen, and then from there he'll just start attacking with toad, clicking punch all the way. Hmm. So was that an easy matchup? Um. Yeah. I started with Giratina. I left it. I left Giratina in, um, in active, and then I just started adding energies to him. And um, I was planning to hex him on on game one, but it was price. Um, he did set up. He did manage to set up, but the thing is, um, he can't find his hex as well. <laughs> so it wasn't good for me. Uh, Giratina was just staying there doing nothing. Right. And then game two, uh, I found the hex. I chained hex three times. That'll do but it. But <laughs> I can't find an energy though, so there's nothing I can do. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I found a first my first double dragon. I attached it on the bench. I have Keldeo uh, to rush in because uh, um, he killed he killed Toad. My top draw was a uh, was a Sycamore. Drop everything. Added a double dragon. Changed the stadium, and I locked it from there. Nice. Okay, so that was round eight. Still going on that win streak, so... And that's, what, six wins in a row? Yeah. And then you just got to win the last round to make it into day two. That win and in, uh, that was uh, Yeah, win or tie. Yeah, win or tie. So were you feeling nervous going into round nine? Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was imagine. offering a tie. I, 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 went to the, I went to the table. I saw his name. Went to the table. I told him, do you want a tie? And he said, no, I don't want a tie. Oh. Ooh. And I'm like, okay. And then after I after I asked him, and then we were shuffling and shuffling, and we were gonna start playing. 
And then he was like, probably he, he draw he, he that draw something. And I was like, oh, you know what? We can tie if you want. And then I was like, I changed my mind too because I saw my hand. I'm like, oh no, I have a good hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I know uh, on stream you hit that turn one gets it. No, we were we were we're not on stream yet. We were oh. on the table, regular tables. And then a judge came and said, "You're you guys are moving to the uh, you're you're moving to the um, stream." And I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> Cause I mean I'm I'm right now I'm on pressure I need to win or I need to tie, yeah. right? So I don't want to, and the judge says if you don't if you don't do it we'll give you a game loss. That's dumb. What? Well, that's what they said. So like, but then, then they can give us a game loss for turning it down. That's wild. So now I don't know. I got scared when I heard game loss. So I was like, yeah. you know what? Let's go. You know I thought they would Let's tell go. you like before they put out the pairings yeah. or anything like. But so you don't start the game already. I figured that's what they would do. I guess not. Uh, even then, threatening a game loss. Is I don't know what stream. happened on that one, but yeah. So we went to the stream, and then um, there were some uh, issues like uh, we need to risk sleeves, and also that I'm going first, and then Charlie asked me if I still want to tie. But we're already on stream. I mean, if you're on stream, we can say, oh, you know what? Let's just tie. Hmm. Probably people <laughs> will just. Probably when people see that in person, are like they start throwing eggs at us. You're on streaming a tie. Like, yep. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I can don't see think we can do that anymore because they were already on stream. And they said, and it was like, you know, maybe we can just tie and then don't let people know. And I was like, how can you do that? The record will show that if we tie or not. <laughs> so we decided to play it out, and well, I got lucky. <laughs> Let's right. just say I just got lucky. You know, I mean, That's I was Trev. watching it live. I don't think a, a Tyson Toad have a good chance of winning over Trev, so. I think I, I, think I tuned in at near the end of this round. Unfortunately. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I was watching the event, and I saw the round nine pop up, and I saw your name pop up, and I was like, all right, sweet, I'm actually going to sit and watch this. Actually, yeah, because didn't you message us at that point? Yep, I sent it to yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's when I tuned in. So I was like, we've already got the interview lined up regardless of how he does, and this is, you know, winning in, so... Okay, I actually kind of remember this matchup now. Yep. Because uh, there was definitely that turn one gets us that was, like, just incredibly delicious. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> the judge was like, that was a good gets us. <laughs> yeah, like, I, you could see him in the background just kind of like, oh, man, that just happened. And then he, he threw an end, and I was like, and, and then that's deck. a good top, bro. <laughs> Because <laughs> you uh, you get system down to one Trevin and break in hand, right? Huh? Yep. And I even cut. I mean, after he shuffled, I cut. So it was my fault giving him the end. Right. <laughs> I mean, can't really control that. It's just luck. It is what it is. It's just one of those like, man, this clutch gets us. Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So you ended up winning round nine because you made day two. Yeah. Well, there was still a uh, controversial Jirachi. Yeah, there was a uh, well. Also in uh, was it game three of round nine? Oh, true. yeah. He just he had to mulligan. What was it? Seven or eight times? Six. Six. Yeah. So he had to start with a pretty monstrous hand. Yeah, but my stars was really really bad. So I'm taking all of it. Right. <laughs> I wasn't even asking the judge, you know what, one more mulligan, seven is fine, or even eight is fine, because my hand is really crappy. Because, like, you'd watch the stream, and, like, he would just throw his hand down and be like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, if I remember correctly, your point looked kind of, kind of, a little bit on tilt. A little tilted. <laughs> I mean, imagine I have 12 cards in my hand, and I'm going first. Yeah, I'd be pretty tilted, too. Yeah. <laughs> but so then you mentioned you said something about the Jirachi. Oh, uh, game three, yeah. <laughs> that's that's why I don't want to be on stream. Right. The it does add a lot of pressure. Yeah. No, I, I mean it's a long that. day. It's been nine rounds, and then the pressure being on stream is like it's kind of different. I mean, I was trying. I'm trying to aim for um, Skyla if I. Where I mean, I scoop, uh, super scoop up Jirachi, place and then play it, get Skyla, and then Skyla for a bear bang. Yeah. Just I want to kill, I want to kill the 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 shaman, 
as soon as I can because there's nothing in the bench. Yep. Yeah, he started the lone shaman and then just couldn't get anything else. Yep. Yeah, and then the one thing that I don't want to start with Silent Lab, and then I got Silent Lab, so. Yeah, he went to play Jirachi to go get it, and Silent Lab was out. Uh, I was I mean, going to change the Silent Lab for uh, for a uh, uh, freaking uh, Burbank. To win the game, pretty much. To win the game. I mean, I don't think, I think we've all been there. I get just him for one, and I drew a Burbank. <laughs> so it was meant to happen. Maybe not in the best of ways. I mean, hey, you still got the game in the end, so yeah, the misplay true. didn't matter too much. Uh, so, uh, like I said, day one was very, very, uh, I'll put it, very exhausting. <laughs> you know, well, I, I believe mean, it. For anyone who's never gone to big events, I mean, nine rounds. Even so, like I know, like some other games do seven rounds, but seven nine rounds is exhausting. Mentally, yeah. is exhausting. Oh yeah, mentally too, because I started really bad, like zero one one, and I was like, it kept running in my head. If I miss something or I do something really bad, it, that's it, game over. Right. I mean, and especially when you're traveling to these events, you know, with travel and all that, it's kind of hard to actually get enough sleep the night before. Oh yeah. Day one. And then you're stressed out, you're trying to figure out what to play, so it's definitely really exhausting. Yeah, and I was, um, I was uh, fixing my son's deck uh, the night before. What did the he play? Oh, uh, he played Dark Dragons. There you go, CJ. Hey. Just for you. <laughs> Dark Dragons is one of my favorite decks. Yep. I mean, for him, it works for him. I mean, he likes attacking so much. Getting yeah. hit for a big amount <coughs> is always fun. I feel that. Alright, so... Uh, that was see. That's the finishing of day one. Yep. So, what were you thinking the morning of going into day two? The morning of uh, day two? I hope I don't play any uh, Lorantis or DC Joy. Any plume, any plume variant. I was like so scared of playing it. <laughs> Especially because uh, Kettler's made it pretty popular, I'd say. Yeah, that is true. Like popular might even be an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plume dice. Like the amount of tilt on someone's face when you flip your starting Pokemon and there's an Oddish is. All right. So day two. Round ten versus Dean Nizam. Nizam? Yeah. So how did uh, that go? Yeah, he's one of the best players there is. Uh, we're playing. He's also playing Totina. Mm. Uh, well, Totina versus I mean Toad versus Toad, it will take forever. Yeah. It's not I a mean, lot of damage going out. That yeah. sounds awful. Sounds like a best of one. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we just ended up tying. So, uh, last round, I cannot get any energy, but I have. I got lucky with the uh, head ringers. I started with it. I gave. I, I gave. Um, I put the head ringers on toads. I didn't mind about the Gratina, So we just tied because there's no way we can we can finish the game. I mean, it's still better than a loss. Yeah. Okay, so round 10 tie. So going into round 11 versus Christopher Shemansky. Shemansky. Yeah. Yep, that was an auto loss. There's nothing I can do about it. Really? Because he was playing for two uh, reasons. Groudon, First right? reason, Toad, Toad never wins to Groudon. Yeah. Second, I never had experience playing with a Groudon, so. Oh. It's definitely not. It's not super popular, but just because of how expensive it is. Yeah, the tropical beaches, yeah. Yeah. Don't you need, need like, three or four? It's four. For, for the beaches know. in the deck? It's up there. Probably three or four, yeah. Dollar that, sign. That, that's some money. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what, a hundred and a hundred a pop or something? At least. Something like that. Yeah. I would play it if beaches weren't so expensive. Right. So the day two starts pretty much identical to day one. Yeah. Tyler's. Zero, one, one again. Mm -hmm. 
so Superman time again, right? <laughs> I, I I don't know about that. I was like now, I, in my head I was just like I want to do top sixteen, at least top sixteen now. Right. I mean, hey, that's still be a good finish. I mean, I mean, doing top sixteen is good, better than you know. Coming from a zero one one, I'll take top sixteen. Right. Thing. Okay. So round twelve, going with a tie and a loss against William Crawford. Oh, the uh, Belltall Dark Ride. It was. I think it was the um, the old school version of the Belltall Dark Ride. So it was an easy match for me, uh, but the problem is we ran out of time again. What's the difference between like the old school Darkrai and Maxi's Darkrai, or Maxi's if it's on old school if it's all? Uh, yeah, the Galade. There's no Galade on that one. Huh. It's weird. I didn't see. I didn't see a Galade when when he played it. So it just goes with the Archeops. Uh. Or does it play no Maxi's at all? I didn't even see an Archeops actually. I just saw Darkrai, Veltal, and pretty much that's it. It's just a generic dark box. Probably. Like dark good stuff. Yeah, because that's essentially what dark is, it's just good stuff. <laughs> right, I can I can kind of see that. Probably it's, uh, it's consistency over tech. Right. Yeah. I can understand that. You know, consistency wins events, so... Okay, so you said that was an easy round for you? No, it was a tie. He tied. Oh, tied. Okay. Out of top okay. him. Just, yeah, you said they ran out of time. Dang, so going into round 13, two ties and a loss. So day two's not looking too great. So yeah. far. So aiming still for top 16, that's it. Just top right. 16. <laughs> okay, so we got round 13 versus Michael Pramawat. Yeah, when I saw his name, I got the chills. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand why. It's yeah, it's my little promo. Come on, man. You know, like that's one of the oh few names I recognize, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I can definitely relate. I I went to a Magic event and played against a Pro Tour Hall of Famer, and the like, the chills and like the nervousness you get playing against a recognized name can be pretty bad. Yeah, and then I saw us playing Night March, and I was like, Whew. Uh, I feel a little, I feel a little okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It's a nightmare, so somehow you know, I can scared play with it. to just kind of laughing on the inside. All right, so it was round thirteen versus Night March. So you kind of go from like scared at first to just kind of laughing on the inside, like, all right, this is what I came here for. Yeah, man, I'll just have to pull that Giratina, attach energy to it, and just start attacking, and that's 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 the only that's the only focus I have at that time. Just chaos wheel for days. You can never attach your energy. <laughs> so that'll give... It was, it was, it was tight. I mean, it was really a, a tough game also because... I mean, it's Michael have outs for Giratina. Right. He got, he got outs for it. It's just... I don't know. Probably, I, I can say I just got lucky with that one. I got, I got lucky with it. So that finally gives us a win in day two. Yeah. For the first time in day two. So that should pretty much clinch you 16 at that point, right? Yes. So you hit your goal. At this point, everything else is just gravy. Like at this point, you can just do better. Right. So then... We got round 14 versus Jimmy Pendarvis. Well, again, the chills. Just looking by that name. Yep. I mean, I can... Yeah, I believe it. So... And I was like, oh, you know what? I made top 16. It's fine. I already did it. Uh, if, even if I lose, it's fine. And then Judge came and told me, you're starting with a game loss. Oh, my God. What? Because uh, they did a random check uh, on the decks. And they said I forgot to put EX on Giratina. Oh, my Oh, that sucks. So I'm playing with Jimmy, one of the best players there is, and I'm starting with a game loss. It's yeah, definitely like, one of those mistakes that can easily happen. Yeah. So uh, we started with round two, because round two is automatically a win for him. 
round two, I started with, um, I started the round two, and I realized he's also playing Totina, um, gets his turn one, as always, uh, <laughs> Headringer, Headringer, uh, and then I just keep holding all my, uh, Team Flare, Sorosic, I was holding it in my hand, so I got game two for some reason. So you actually have a chance at top eight now. You just got to get through one more game. Well, the problem is round uh, game three is starting first. And he did the same thing. He gets this me. Uh-oh. Um, and then my top draw was an Ultra Ball. An Seems Ultra good. Ball for Hoopa. Filled up my bench. Yeah. Got, I got five on my bench. He got five on his bench. I got... Um, I have Jirachi. Um, instead of Getsis, I grab Colorus. And then I played Colorus for 10. I hit two Headringers, a Tool Scrapper, a Floatstone, a Team Flare, a Sorosic, and a Hands Hammer, a Via Seeker, a DCE. These all sound like good cards. Yeah. <laughs> everything I need. Everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much, I remove, I remove the, uh, I remove its floatstone on Caldeo and the fighting fear belt on uh, Toad, and then I put a, a headringer on Caldeo so there's no more floatstone on it, and then I added the headringer on his active Toad, and I can't find any energy, so um, I played one and the DCE. That's the only. D I realized that I only have. I'm only playing with two DCE and two two are price. Oh, that's pretty crucial. Yeah, so I played the DCE. I started attacking. Uh, he removed it. I played the next one. Um, he didn't pull any. Uh, I don't know which one he played. If it's either the Sirosic or the Team Flare, but he didn't get the other one. So just in time that I killed one of his Pokemon, I grabbed the price and I grabbed it. I grabbed another DCE. Just All in right, time, yeah. Just in time. So lucky from prize. that point, it was it was just game. And now, was there any chance of you bubbling out of top cut, or was it a sure lock? Um, I was uh, I was told I'm I'm gonna bubble. Ooh. I, I was told I was gonna bubble. So that's mm. gotta be pretty nerve wracking. Yeah, but I was like, I mean, for my, I mean, I was thinking already, right, top sixteen is top sixteen is already good for me. Yeah, I mean, I I'd, I'd be happy with just the day two, so I can't. I mean, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, making making day two was a uh, was good. Making top sixteen was like, oh, that's that's awesome already for me. So yeah, I'm happy now. If I make top eight, it's good. But if I, I make, made my goal of sixteen, right? <laughs> yeah, then we saw the list, and I was like surprised. Did you squeak? I, 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 I was I was in the restroom, and then I came back, and a friend of me told me, "Oh, you just made it." And I was like, oh, 16? No, bro, you made a top eight. And I was like, you're serious? So we started time. running. We started <laughs> running toward the, the result. And I was like, oh, shit, I did. I bet that was pretty exciting. Yeah, and nerve wracking. <laughs> I can feel I feel you. I, making top eight at regional, that's... So at this point, like, you, you see everyone else on top eight. You should, at this point, I'm assuming you have a general idea of what everyone's playing. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts heading into the top cut? Uh, that's the end of my journey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just not even sugarcoating it. It's done. Cut it a wrap. Yeah, I'm ready to take my three boxes, and I'm ready to go home. Three right. boxes? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I saw his name. I thought, oh, it's Christopher again. The yep. Groudon again. Play against like, Groudon. <laughs> yeah, then um, I, I called Jimmy, Jimmy Sang. I'm like, Jimmy, what should I do? And I was like, relax, relax, you can do this. So he told me, like, play Toad all the way until it's Toad, and then wait for it, wait for it. And then when the Groudon comes out, bring out your Giratina. And uh, I talked to Mark Garcia, same, so like, just go with the Toads, go with the Toads, and then play Giratina. So game one, he, he won. And then game two, I won with the strategy that they gave me. Game three, I was hoping I can do the same thing, but for some reason, I ran out of a VS Seeker because I have two. Uh, 
I have to discard two early in the game. Oh. And um, I played the I played the shaman to grab a via seeker so I can end him to two, and from that point lock him with Giratina. But I whip the the via seeker and I just scoped because there's nothing I can do anymore. Well, top eight finish, okay. There it goes. All right, there it goes. Top eight finish still good enough. So. I mean, I don't know anyone who'd be disappointed with a top eighting. I mean, Fair I'm enough. not. I mean, zero one one. I'm not. I'm not. We started zero one one day one and day two. Right. Getting into top eight, quite the accomplishment. Yeah. Need to get a super uh, my son was like laughing at me at first. Actually, he was like. Oh, I don't think you're gonna make it, Dad. I'm already on top eight, and you're not gonna make it. He was like, he just kind of wanted to rub it in. <laughs> yeah, he was bullying me actually. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> All right, so now that we've gone through the whole tournament, the tech choices you made, like Headringer, Rock Guard, seems kind of out of the norm. What did you think of how they performed? Rock Guard did good. I mean, um, I love rock. I love rock guard. Uh, I got the idea from Eddie, Eddie Gutier uh, Gutierrez. Uh, I used to play um, computer search, but I realized that the uh, playing with a rock guard, because you know, I mean, Toad only can do thirty damage. Right. Uh, Forty with Fury Belt and fifty with Muscle Band, but no one plays Muscle Band anymore. So I decided to play the the rock guard. So that somehow I can save Gert, uh, Toad, you know, from being killed or killed early in the game. Even if they keep attacking it, they keep taking damage out of it too. So I stick with the Rock Guard, and I think I would probably keep Rock Guard even if I have to play Toad Tina again. Okay. See, Rock Guard was the choice that I was most interested in. Like, I look at him I'm like, hold on, there's no computer search. What's going on? Right. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing I, computer I played, search. I played Eddie, Eddie uh, Bucharest in one of the League Cup, uh, League Challenge last year. I have computer search and he have a uh, uh, rock guard and I, I, I realized how good rock guard is. Hmm. And I was like, I attack him with, I deal 30, he deals 60. And I was like, oh, rock guard that good. Okay, seems pretty good. Now, there was someone in Fonte who wanted to know, how much did you like Super Scoop Up? Whenever I hit tens, I love Scoop Up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the perfect answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the same as, it's the same as uh, Crushing Hammers. I love it whenever I hit heads. But, like I said, if you hit tails, you, you want to curse it, you want to rip it, you know, like... Just take it out of the deck completely. Take, yeah. <laughs> So the last question we're going to have for this interview is going to be, is there anything you would have done differently with the deck in hindsight? Uh, I'm going to look for, a, if there's a Pokemon that runs a DCE on his first attack, stage one, or a basic, I mean a basic Pokemon, I will replace Taurus <laughs> for a, 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 a uh, for a uh, you know like uh, for a, a Pokemon that can hit Groudon like a, a grass type Pokemon, basic. I would definitely gonna add it because I realize I have no outs for Groudon. So uh, a basic Pokemon for grass that runs DCE definitely gonna replace Taurus if there's one. Have you looked into it yet? Uh, yeah, there's none. <laughs> oh, I, was, I okay. didn't think there was. Like, I was sitting here trying to think. I could see you thinking. No, I, was, there's like, I can't think of anything. <laughs> there's none, actually. There's none. No, I mean, but Taurus didn't do anything for me. Like, Though we might like, get one soon, cross his fingers. It's always possible. It's always possible. I mean, who knows? All right, guys. Yeah. So that was it for the top eight interview. But luckily, Michael's agreed to do an interview, kind of like a pre Seattle interview because Seattle's coming up so we're going to cut this one here and we're going to do another one that should be up tomorrow whenever you're viewing this Yeah. and anyways guys that's it thanks Michael for joining us and as always guys oh I'm doing it? yeah stay jolly <laughs> <laughs>